So if you've got your demonstration slides, I just want you to pull them out. We're going to look through demo 1A and 1B, and then we'll take a break at that point. Right. I just want you to focus on this first paragraph for the moment. Okay. Obviously that's a little bit small, but if you have your own copy, you should be able to read along. So L. Scoff has invested in Wellesley by purchasing a debenture um, issued by Wellesley. The debenture has a $100,000 face, coupon of 10%, two-year term, at the time of the issue, the market interest rate for similar bonds was 12%. Now, in any situation, it is a good idea to write this stuff down. And just pull out the stuff that you need. Uh, turn, uh, market. So this is essentially the information that we have here. We've got four pieces of information. We have the face of the instrument, which is 100,000. We have the coupon of 10%, the 12% market rate, and the two-year term. What we don't know is how much the fair value of this thing was, which means we don't know how much money Earl Scoff actually paid to get this instrument. Because what the $100,000 is tells you how much he, how much Wellesley, who issued, the, who issued the bond, will pay Earl Scoff at the end. So the face of the instrument, if you actually looked at it, was a piece of paper. It says, I will pay person X, or I will pay $100,000 in two years' time. That's what that $100,000 is. It's not how much you receive for it. <coughs> the coupon is 10%, which is saying you're paying 10%, and we're just going to assume that's um, per annum, in arrears. So at the end of the first year, they're going to pay 10% of the face. So the coupon is $10,000. So at the end of one year, they'll pay $10,000. At the end of two years, they're going to pay $10,000 plus the $100,000. So what we've now set up is a series of cash flows. Once you've used the coupon to come up with this number, you don't need that coupon rate ever again. All that you need that, that number for is to come up with this. Once you've got the coupon, you don't use it to discount anything. You don't use it for any other purpose. So you can kind of scratch it if you want. What we need to do then is to go, okay, well, that's $10,000 in T1 and $110,000 in T2. We need to discount those to today. And the rate that we use is the market rate. So the market rate is used to discount. The coupon rate is used to come up with the cash flows. Once you have done that, there are present value tables, financial calculators if you're at home, obviously spreadsheets. What you're going to end up with is the whole next set of the information. Oops, that's a bit small. Like all this bit is just talking about the present value calculation. So if you're comfortable with that and what, how we've got the cash flows, that just, that's all that that was talking about. And so what we end up with is 96,621. we then turn into what is called the effective interest method. So we need to figure out so the effective interest method works like so. 
And this is important because we're going to use this same table when it comes to leasing next week. So it's multi-purpose. Take this opening balance. Oh, sorry, take this number. That's the opening balance, and that's what we put down here. This interest expense is based on the opening times by the market. Now, that market rate is the market rate when you set it up. So even if this is a multi-year instrument and the market rate changes, you use the market rate at the start. So it's 12%. That is the interest rate you use all the way through. The payment figure we know is just a coupon. So they paid $10,000. If you want to have another column in there which shows the net change, you can do that. But the idea from all of this is to come up with the closing balance. And what we see is the closing balance has gone from 96 to 98. And if you've ever, and the reason, even though this is looking at the asset side of things, the liability for Wellesley will be doing exactly the same thing. If you think about it from a credit card point of view, and I hope none of you are in this boat, but if you happen to be in a situation where your payment is less than your interest, you're going to be accruing, like you, the amount of the balance in your credit card statement is going to be growing. That's exactly what's happening here. We haven't, we haven't met the amount of interest that's being done, and so that balance gets, in, gets increased. That just comes down to here. This is then, this new opening balance times by 12%. The payment is $10,000 again we end up with a closing balance of $100,000. This is in the same year, we just disaggregated it, and this is $100,000 final payment. And we end up with a balance of zero because we paid everything. And it's really neat with these because you have to, like this will end up, if everything is done right, that will end up at zero. There may be cases, and I'll just talk really quickly about this, there may be cases where that doesn't end up at zero, but you might end up with a couple of dollars here, there, even if it's a really big instrument, a couple hundred dollars. That's probably because of rounding issues. Best to just check how much, what proportion, if it's $100 over a $10 million instrument, it's probably just a rounding issue. Um, the present value tables have dropped off. If you looked at the present value factors, they're only to decimals of three, to three or four decimal places, so there's going to be rounding there. If you're doing this all manually and are rounding to two decimal places, there's going to be errors that creep in. I wouldn't get worried about that. We're, we are aware that that happens. But ultimately, you've got to end up with what the face of the instrument is here before, before the final payment. So we know with this one, we are adding to it. Like that's got to be the case. It shouldn't be shrinking. Um, so we've done that. Let's have a look at the entries for them. Okay. So at the end of year one, so start of year one, Elskoff has lent money, so they've credited cash, and they've got some sort of financial asset. So they've called it investment in debentures, you could call it just debentures, whatever it is, but it's a financial asset. Oops, put that here, financial asset. And that is that number that we worked out up above. At the end of year one, El Scoff is going to receive $10,000 $10, from the coupon. So that's a given. Uh, it's a given as much as we had to calculate 100,000 times 10%, but it's in effect a given. What we've also calculated is the 11,595, because we've done that from the opening balance times by the market interest rate. So that's, again, it's not a given, but we've got all the inputs to do it. The middle item, how much the debenture changes, either is increased or decreased, is based on whatever we need to balance this entry out. Um, so it could well be a credit, but in this case, we've got a debit. Repeat the process. We've got the coupon payment. 
We've got the calculation from the second line and we've got the balancing item. So it's just a matter of once you've got this, once you've got into the swing things, just stepping through it. And at the end of it all, Wellesley repays the 100,000, you debit cash, which is the final, and you de-recognize the golden eyes, and you de-recognize the investment in the debenture. We've made some money, he's got some interest revenue, he's got his cash back and a little bit more, and there's no debenture left on the balance sheet. So that is a straight debt instrument accounted for under the historic cost approach. A little bit to take in, but before we move on, is, there, is that, well, I suppose, does anyone have any questions about what we've just done? Cool. Yes, Chris. How do you calculate the investment? How do I calculate the investment? Which, what, which number? The, Uh, that one, it's simply just the difference between those two. So that's all, it's just whatever you need to, you know, accountants like things to balance, it's just what we need to make that all balance. So that's the historic cost. Now let's look at it from the other point of view where Lscoff is like, well, actually I don't want to necessarily, my intention is not necessarily to collect all the cash flows, um, but is actually to potentially do something else with it. 